A lot of people have a lot of rules that they have to comply with before they allow themselves to be happy. But what if we could just, right now, without condition, allow ourselves to be happy? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the condition for happiness. So just now, about 20 minutes ago, I was sitting in the Phoenix, which is a restaurant on the edge of the Plaza Expiatorio here in Guadalajara. And I'm there drinking an agua fresca with hierba buena or spearmint and mixed up in water and just enjoying the environment, sitting there pleasantly, reading my book, reading actually one of the finest books about psychotherapy I've read to date, which is On Becoming a Person by Carl Rogers. And I'm happy. Now, if I told you, okay, I'm in this beautiful city, I'm in a city in which Every time I walk around, I stop for a moment just to feel grateful that I can live in a city like this. And I'm enjoying this quiet Sunday afternoon and I'm drinking this delicious drink and I'm reading one of the texts, which brings me pleasure. Now, you might think, well, obviously you're happy because the conditions are there. But if we dig into that a little deeper, we'll find mm, often that's really not the case. If you imagine that you're feeling unhappy and somebody says to you, you should feel happy. Let me list all of the reasons <laughs> that you should feel happy or that you shouldn't be preoccupied or something like that. Normally, that is not going to make you happy. In fact, you probably get even more frustrated. In Tony Robbins book, I think it's in Awaken the Giant Within. He talks about the conditions that people set for happiness. So it turns out that you can actually set your own conditions. This is what he says in the book. And I find this to be true in my own experience. So a lot of people will have these very high standards. So I have to be rich or I have to be financially comfortable. I have to be in good health. I have to have all of my family also be happy, which all right, already um, people have a lot longer list than those. But already you can see it's starting to get a lot out of control. And once you start factoring other people's emotional states into the mix, it's like you're never going to reach that. You're never going to be happy. Now, a lot of people will tell me that happiness is not a destination. It's a means of transportation. Or they say that happiness is the byproduct of living your life well, living successfully or living with purpose, you might say. And I think that is valid. That's a way you can achieve happiness. It's a valid path to happiness or a valid path to continue with happiness, you might say. I think there might be actually a better way. So as I'm sitting there reading Carl Rogers, he's describing and got the transcripts with one of his or one of his colleagues, clients, who he names Mrs. Oak. And she says, it's funny, you know, sometimes I think about when somebody says to a child who's crying, they say, don't cry. Or, you know, stand up, chin up, be a strong man. You know the stereotype. And Mrs. Oak thinks, somehow this never seemed right to me. If the child wants to cry, let him cry. And then she says... Equally, when a child just 
feels pleased with himself and not in an egocentric way, not in a vain way. The child just feels good about himself. Why not just let the child feel good? And Mrs. Oak goes on to say that actually she identifies with the child in that situation. She can just feel good. Rogers seems to come to the conclusion that happiness is the natural state of human beings. I wrote months back and included this in one of the episodes saying how maybe happiness or maybe letting go of your worries is a hard thing. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's actually one of the easiest things you've ever done. Like letting go of so many boats on Loi Kratong. I'm not sure if I explained that comment in the episode. Loi Kratong is a festival in Thailand where people will build little boats, especially made out of bread or seeds and stuff, so the birds can eat it. And they re- release it with a little letter or a little note. They put it onto the lake or onto the river and let it go. And I realized later how apt that analogy is. I was just thinking about things that you let go. And actually, on Loi Kratong, they let go of their wishes. Interesting. Now, who knows if their wishes will come true after that. But in any case, it's no longer in their hands. Let go of so many things. Let go of the conditions that we put on ourselves to be healthy, to be productive, to be one way or to be like a model on a billboard, or to be like what our parents wanted us to be or to be what we hoped we could have been. What if we just let go? And just be, (laughs) as Rogers talks about so much, just be what we are. And often we'll find that means being happy. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for letting go of those things that are inhibiting your happiness. It doesn't mean you have to let go of your ambitions or desires. You don't have to hang your happiness on them either. Have a wonderful day. (laughs) And I'll speak to you soon. A beautiful thought. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed that episode, feel free to share it with your friends and give it to anyone on the street. Give away flyers, print them up, write them on your forehead, scribble it in a graffiti across the LaTeX insurance building in Newcastle, New South Wales, and let people know about this podcast so they can enjoy it as much as you have. And have a wonderful day. Adios.